Today we're going to talk about cleaning silver plated brass instruments. Now to make this explicitly clear when I talk about a silver plated instrument I'm talking about an instrument that has a silver color. This is not a silver plated instrument. This is a silver plated instrument. So the first thing to do when cleaning any instrument is well what I like to do anyway is to give it a bath. Take all the bits out, uh, take all the bits apart that come apart conveniently, i.e. if it's a struggle to take it apart, it's either very dirty or not intended to be taken apart. So you must make that distinction yourself. But remove the tuning slides, remove the mouthpiece, remove the valves, uh, and soak the main body of the instrument in a warm bath. This does a couple of things. Firstly, it loosens some of the grime and muck that, is, uh, that generally accumulates within an instrument. It kills some of the disease, the bacteria, the syphilis and so forth that may be present within the instrument. Um, and it just makes the rest of the cleaning process just that little bit easier. So take the body of your instrument, throw that, uh, place that gently into warm water, uh, into a tub of warm water or a bath of warm water depending on uh, the size of your instrument. Make sure it's not warm as in it's starting to go cold, but warm as in quite, quite warm. Um, ensure that there's a bit of soap in there. I like using Yamaha brass soap myself and just let the instrument soak. Don't put your valves in that bath. Valves usually have felt and other components which protect their mechanism. Don't put that in with the rest of your instrument. Keep that separate uh, because that will have a slightly different cleaning process. So uh, well, let's take that situation, we've got our instrument, we've got our tub full of reasonably warm, uh, some may even say hot, soapy water, let the instrument soak in there for a reasonable period of time. Once you've got that uh, completed, uh, it's time to apply some polish. So I'm now going to show you a time lapse of me polishing an instrument and generally rambling uh, whilst doing so. So this is the instrument that we're going to be cleaning. I've taken the uh, tuning slides out of it uh, already. As you can see, there's a lot of tarnish on the bell here. The general state of the metal is, is quite poor. Uh, if we take a close look at one of these tuning slides, we can see that uh, it's very corroded. And it looks like there's some, some, some of the acids that you have on your fingers has reacted with the metals in here. So what we're going to be doing is using a few cotton rags which I bought in a massive clean sack off uh, an auction site here in New Zealand and Brasso. This is one of my favorite products uh, for cleaning brass instruments. Now silver plated brass instruments like this uh, you may prefer to use silvo as, instead of Brasso but uh, personally and this may sound heretic to some people I find they're much of a muchness in terms of in terms of a result. And we'll start Firstly with this tuning slide. I believe this comes out of the first valve here um, I can't actually remember. It's going to be a bit like a jigsaw puzzle putting this all back together again Directions shake well before use Doing this action uh, for long extended periods of time is not something that usually comes too natural too naturally to trombonists. This is much more of a, a woodwind sort of a, um, an experience and as a result my hand gets quite tired uh, relatively quickly. I'm going to assume that this is well shaken enough. What Brasso and Silvo uh, and their ilk do is that they operate by taking off a layer of metal. Uh, they're a little bit uh, rough on the metal and you can't do this process ad infinitum uh, but what you'll get hopefully after a bit of manual polishing a bit of a bit of buffing is that you'll get a noticeable difference in the side that you have uh, applied some cleaning product to and that which you haven't with this particular tuning slide there will be uh, some of the tarnish will not be possible to be removed um, when you've got things like tuning slides um, and parts of the instrument where uh, your hand finds a frequent home um, you're going to find that the acids in your hand are going to eat into the metal itself. And that, that uh, process tends to go quite deep 
uh, into the metal so it's not going to be possible to clean everything off it's just going to be a possible it's just going to be a matter of doing the best with what you can and to hope that you get some sort of a notice now once you've done a bit of a massage you want to use a clean part of the rag and just give it a bit of a buff If you're going to hold tuning slides, make sure you don't hold them like this because you could inadvertently squeeze these two together which is going to adjust the shape of this and uh, affect the, the, the distance between this part of the tuning slide and this part here which will make it more difficult to slip inside and out of uh, your instrument. So always keep one or two fingers between these two tuning slides just depending on how fat your fingers happen to be and the width available to you between these two parts of it just to ensure that um, the instrument doesn't suffer as a result of your cleaning process. Now this is a process that you should repeat several times just to get the utmost result but all I'm looking to achieve here is just a general clean of the instrument. I'm not looking to restore it to its optimal condition just to make it clean enough that I don't feel like I'm going to get syphilis by holding it. If you get to the point where you're starting to see brass coming through, stop because more polishing is just going to wear away more of that silver coated layer. So unless you're trying to get to the brass underneath, remember to stop before it's too late. We've got a lot of corrosion here. We've got some black spots almost starting to turn blue in the right light. Some yellow spots, most multicolored. You can actually see somewhere, somewhere, um, you can actually see some places where a person has touched this with very acidic fingers and you can see their fingerprints made on this instrument. So what causes this tarnish uh, is a number of things, but included in that number of things is uh, leaving moisture on the bell. So if you've got a, a dribble of spit or you've got some condensation or something like that, clean it off the bell as soon as possible and don't let it to dry there because what starts out as water spots eventually will mutate uh, into different conditions that will result in an unappealing uh, finish on your instrument. When brass instruments get manufactured, there is an, usually an extensive buffing process which uh, is completed. And that buffing process involves a, a strong person holding the instrument against a buffing wheel. Now, that process only cleans up to a certain depth of the bell. So when you are cleaning, uh, you may find that you reach a mark where the metal quality changes. Now, that's not necessarily the metal itself changing. What that may be is simply where the buffers could no longer reach. One of the things to remember is that whenever you put polish onto an instrument, you must always remove every last drop of polish because... What polish is designed to do is to eat off the top layer of metal and have that top layer of metal um, removed uh, onto your rag. And so if you leave a drop of polish behind, um, it's going to continue to do its job. And when it does that, it's going to eat through your entire outer coat, uh, your, sorry, your entire outer layer of metal. And you don't want that to happen because, number one, it'll leave your instrument in a worse off condition. Um, and number two, it's an irreversible process. The only way to uh, the only way to remedy that would be to manually and and at some expense recoat your instrument. Uh, that's not a process that you'll enjoy paying for if you know the appearance of your instrument is is of any interest to you. So it's very important to wipe your polish off. Now, if it dribbles into parts of the instrument where you can't reach by cloth by hand uh, or any other method, then perhaps using a Q-tip or a cotton bud as they're known uh, in this part of the world uh, can be an acceptable way of doing that. 
So that's the process of cleaning the instrument. The last thing is to put the valves in, uh, assemble the instrument back together and see what result you get. Now the instrument that I've been demonstrating this on is this instrument here, which uh, is an old style brass instrument which I, was, uh, I paid 45 New Zealand dollars for. And it is now in a state where perhaps it wouldn't win any awards, nor is it intended to, but it suits my purpose. I've removed um, most of the traces of the previous owners on it. Unfortunately there's going to be some permanent uh, damage, particularly inside the bell where some uh, person has had their hand stuffed up. It really feels quite unpleasant shoving my own hand up this bell. Um, but it is a satisfactory result for a clean. It took me about 45 minutes worth of polishing and, and uh, although that 45 minutes does include me generally rambling about what I'm doing so it should take you a little bit less. And the result is an instrument which I am now quite comfortable to hold uh, and quite comfortable to play on. So I hope this video has helped you. If you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Naturally, this video is just a very brief overview of the general principles that I follow when I clean a brass, uh, when I clean a silver-plated brass instrument. Thanks for watching.